What stories do art objects tell us? I'm Maggie Bell, Assistant Curator at the Norton Simon Museum, and today we'll explore this question through a 15th century Italian painted sculpture of St. Sebastian in the Norton Simon collections. Sebastian came to the museum as a kind of gift from the Wildenstein art dealership, where it had been on display between two Filipino Lippi panels, which are among Norton Simon's most prized acquisitions. The sculpture was likely one of the many Italian Renaissance objects that flooded the late 19th century art market, which often arrived with minimal documentation. Given this lack of written information, our conservator John Griswold and I turned to the object itself to learn more about how it was made and its significance to viewers at the time. As some background, Sebastian, a Christian saint, was a third century Roman soldier who was condemned to death for refusing to renounce his beliefs. He's typically shown nude and youthful, punctured with numerous arrows from the firing squad tasked with his execution. Though in our sculpture, the arrows are noticeably absent. John, did this Sebastian originally have arrows? How do we know, and where did they go? Well, there are clearly visible wounds on St. Sebastian's body, complete with painted blood drips and splatters. I counted 15 in all. Looking closely, it's possible to see the outline of a circular shape, suggesting these wound sites were once open and later filled in. It becomes obvious that these patches were not part of the original polychrome surface when examined under ultraviolet light. They have an entirely different appearance. With the help of Arlen Hagenbotham and Jane Bassett of the Decorative Arts and Sculpture Conservation Department at the Getty Museum, we were able to see inside the sculpture with their 3D digital x-ray system. In at least one clear instance, a segment of a wooden arrow shaft was still embedded in the saint's torso. It's not clear when he might have lost his arrows, but we found that a modern chromium-based pigment had been used for some of the painted blood indicating the wounds had been filled in the 20th century, perhaps to prepare the sculpture for sale on the art market. What else did your analysis reveal about this sculpture and how it was made? Did the artist or artists use techniques that were typical of the time? In most regards, the sculpture was made using traditional materials and methods typical for the region in the later 15th century, with gesso and paint layers applied over a wooden core assembled in sections. But unlike most polychrome wood sculptures, the fine details were not carved directly into the wood. Rather, they were modeled with a soft putty comprised of animal glue, gypsum powder, and chopped hemp fibers or flax fibers. This includes the hair and facial features, as well as the nuanced flesh and musculature on the chest and abdomen. Even the undergarments, down to the bow of the drawstring, were made this way. And what were some things that surprised you during the course of this investigation? Having the chance to see inside the sculpture with moving x-ray images in real time was incredible. I'd have to say the most surprising thing were the very large iron spikes driven through the upper chest and pelvis into the tree trunk. As an art historian, I was particularly fascinated by these large iron nails. In this period, lifelike polychrome sculptures, especially of holy figures, were treated almost like real bodies, often touched or even kissed. This led me to ask, what might the makers of this sculpture have felt in driving these nails into Sebastian's carved body? Of course, understanding the artist's relationships with this work remains speculative, but it's possible to reconstruct their frames of reference. Perhaps these nails called to mind the arrows that pierced Sebastian's skin, Sebastian was also a plague saint who modeled spiritual endurance in the face of bodily collapse. For 15th century artists from central Italy, a region that experienced several plague epidemics, the nails may have been reminiscent of the piercing and cauterizing tools used to treat the sores caused by the plague. Saint Sebastian continues to have lasting power as a beacon of compassion, resilience, sensuality, and healing. In the 20th century, Sebastian became an important figure in the imagination of queer artists, inspiring movies like the 1976 Sebastien, which explored gay desire, pleasure, and pain. 
Keith Haring also incorporated Sebastian's story into his work. And in the 1980s and 90s, during the height of the global AIDS crisis, the saint's image was used to stir compassion for those suffering from the virus. This is shown poignantly in the French poster that reads, AIDS makes no martyr, but rather victims who suffer. Solidarity with AIDS patients. St. Sebastian Anatomy of a Sculpture presented an exciting opportunity for John and I to delve into the manufacture and significance of this object using scientific and historical methods. This investigation contributes not only to a broader understanding of Italian polychrome sculpture, but also the cultural significance of this particular saint, whose iconography remains relevant today.